me a chance. Come, 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 come and jump. the root and the sky of the sky and the bud of the bud of a tree called life which soul can hope and mind can hide and this is what keep the stars apart I carry your heart I carry it in my heart Absolutely beautiful, Mel. Thank you. It's one of my favorite poems by him. E.E. E. Cummings has such a powerful grasp on love. Yeah, he just kind of gets it. Yeah. I mean, love's not hard to understand. It's really simple, actually. You can describe love easily? I, simply. Not easy. Two different things. So what's love simply? Love, love is nothing more than spiritual love. Well, real love is nothing more than spiritual love anyways. Ah, forgot you were an expert on the human heart. Well, when you study humans for years, you have to be an expert in everything human, including the human heart. And Mel is quite the expert in that field, if I do say so myself. Interesting. What about you, Terry? Are you an expert on love, too? <laughs> Oh, absolutely not. Uh, what is that supposed to mean? Honey, you have terrible taste in men. Do you care to elaborate on that? Look, okay, you lucked out with me, but shall we bring up he who shall not be named? He who shall not be named. You know what? Yeah, let, let's bring him up. Oh, good lord. Okay. I'm interested. Who is this and what happened? Let's just say that uh, their relationship wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. His name was Ed. He and I lived together before I met Mel. How long? Does it matter how long? The guy was insane. Honey, don't call people insane. He was just passionate. <laughs> passionate? E.E. E. Cummings is passionate. That man was deranged. He was troubled. He was crazy. He loved me a lot. He loved me so much, he tried to kill me. Like, he tried to kill you? Like, actually attempted to murder you? He, um, he beat me up one night. Um, dragged me around the living room by my ankles. He was shouting, I love you, I, I love you, you bitch. And... He just kept dragging me around the living room. Guess he loved me a little too much. Oh, c come on. That's not love. You know that's not love. I don't know what you'd call it, but that's just not love. Say what you want, but I know what it was. <sighs> Honey, you don't actually believe that. Okay, sure, it's abnormal to you. Yes, sometimes he acted crazy. But he loved me. Don't say there wasn't any love there when there was. Terry's a real romantic. A, uh, uh, a kick me so I know you'll love me type. Hun, I'm, I'm just teasing. No, hmm? he wants to make up. Make up? You know I'm right about Ed. How did we get started on this crap anyway? Let's just change the subject. I just wouldn't call Ed's behavior love. What about you guys, huh? Would you would you call that love? Uh, I'm the wrong person to ask. Um, I don't really know the person, and you have to know the particulars. But what I think you're saying is that love is an absolute, and that's it. Exactly. At least the love I'm talking about is. In that love, you don't try to kill people. I don't really know anything about Ed or what he did, so... And, you know, who can judge someone else's situation, right?
when I left him, he drank rat poison. Ah, how could we forget about the rat poison? They took him to the hospital in Santa Fe. That was where we lived before. They saved his life, but the rat poison, I don't know how, but it caused... It caused his gums to separate from his teeth, like go up. And it made his teeth look like fangs. My God. What people won't do for love. Well, he's uh, six feet under now. Dead as dead can be. He shot himself in the mouth. But he fucked that up too. Poor Ed. Poor Ed nothing. He was dangerous. He did love me, though. Grant me that. Okay, Terry. Just admit he loved me. Yeah, maybe it's a little bit abnormal, and I'm not saying that he loved me the way you did. But just admit that he loved me. That's all I'm saying. Can you grant me that? What do you mean he bungled it? Yeah, what happened after he shot himself? Well, uh... So, um, someone heard a gunshot in the, uh, in the hospital and they ran into his room and found his body. So they had to rush him to the OR. Um, the man lived for like three days um, and his brain swelled to twice the size of his skull. It was disgusting. Um, when Terry found out, she wanted to go see him, but we had a fight about it. I didn't want, him, I didn't want her seeing him all mangled up like he was. Who won the fight? I was in the room with him when he died. He never came out of it, but I stayed with him. He didn't have anyone else. If that's love, you can have it. It is love. Sure, it's abnormal in most people's eyes, but he was willing to die for it. He uh, did die look, for it. I know plenty of people who committed suicide, and no one ever really knows what they did it for. I mean, no one really knows what they actually commit suicide for. Okay, if that's love, you can have it. Well, Nick and I know what real love is. For us, I mean. You're supposed to say something now? Uh, we're lucky. <laughs> you guys, stop that. You're making me sick. You're still on the honeymoon phase. How long have you two been together? A year, year and a half? Going on a year and a half. Oh... Wow. Just you wait. I'm just kidding. You know what? Let's have a toast. Let's uh, let's toast to something. Yeah? Cups are a little empty. Let's toast to something. Something special. Um, let's uh, let's toast to let's toast to love. Yeah, to love. love. Mm, okay. I, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what real love is, okay? I mean, I'll, I'll give a good example, and and then you can draw your own conclusions, right? Um, you know, what <coughs> what do any of us really know about love, right? I mean, it seems to me that we're all just beginners at love. I mean, I mean, I I love Terry. You know, Terry loves me. You know. It obviously, I mean, you guys love each other. It shows all over you, um, you know. I mean, but you know the type of love I'm talking about now, right? Like physical love, that like drawing of one person to another, you know, you know. And then there's there's carnal love, you know, the real sexual desire, yeah. And then there's sentimental love, you know, the day to day caring for the other person, right? But I. I find it really hard to believe that I had love for my first wife. 
You know, but I did. I know I did. I guess I'm like Terry in that regard. You know, Terry and Ed. You know, I find it hard to believe that I, I truly love my first wife. But I know I did. It's, it, it was a time when I thought, you know, I loved her more than life itself. But now I hate her guts. You know, I hate her. I do. I, I, I... What happened to that love? You know, what happened to that love is what I'd like to know. Where did it go? You know, you know, cause there's Ed, you know, oh, you know, okay, okay. So there's Ed, we're back to Ed, okay? He loves Terry so much, he tries to kill her. And then he winds up killing himself. <laughs> you know, you, you guys, you guys, right? You guys have been together for 18 months. And it shows all over you. You glow with it. But you've both loved other people before. You've both been married before. Just like Terry and me. You know, we've been together for five years. Married for four. And the terrible thing is... Well, the terrible thing is... Well, this, the silver lining, you might say... Excuse me for saying this. The silver lining you might say is that if something were to happen to one of us tomorrow, the surviving party would move on and and find somebody else soon enough. And all this love we're talking about, all of this, it would just be a memory. Maybe, maybe not even a memory. Am I am I wrong? Am I am I way off base here? Because if I'm way off base, you know, <laughs> set me straight. Because I I I don't know anything, and I I think I'm the first to admit that. Mm. Honey, are you drunk? <clears throat> are you getting drunk right now? I'm not drunk. I'm just talking. I I don't have to be drunk to say what I'm what I'm thinking. All right, we're all just talking, right? Right? Sweetie, I'm not criticizing. Then don't criticize me. Look, I'm not on call today, all right? Let me remind you of that. I am not on call. Mel, we love you. I love you too, Laura. You know what? And, and you too, Nick. You know, you know what? You guys... You guys are our pals. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, so I was gonna I was gonna tell you guys something about about a story that's still going on right now. And you know what? It should make us feel ashamed when we talk like we know what we're talking about when we talk about love. Honey, don't talk like you're drunk if you're not drunk. It's rude. Just shut up for once in your life. Okay, can you do that for just for a minute, please? Jesus. Okay, so there's this old couple that got in a car accident. And um, they're all torn to shit. And no one's giving them much chance to go through. Okay? Um, you know, they got hit in this camper. Um... <clears throat> And the kid, you know, 18, 19 maybe, he drove his dad's pickup truck right into them on the highway. So I was on call that night, right? Um, I think I think it was maybe May or June, I think. Um, but me, me and Terry, we were out on dinner, and they, they that's when they called me in. Um, and you know, when they brought him in, they were, they were torn to shit. And the kid, the kid. You know, 18, 19, like I said, was DOA immediately. He was dead on arrival. Um, he was laid out on a, gur on a gurney somewhere or some shit like that. Um, he had taken the steering wheel, like, right through his sternum and fucked him up. But the but the old couple, you know, they were barely alive. And 
God knows, the only thing that saved them was their seatbelts. But they had everything. They had lacerations, hemorrhaging, bruises, cuts, the whole works. I mean, that those seatbelts was the only thing that kept them alive. Folks, this is an advertisement from the National Safety Council. This is your spokesman, Dr. Melvin R. McGinnis talking. <laughs> Mel, sometimes you're too much, but I love you, hon. Honey, I love you too. Aww. But seriously, get those seatbelts on. Terry's right. So, what was it? Oh, yeah, so like I was saying, um, the old couple, they were torn to shit, you know, and so I immediately said, let's get an orthopedic man down there and a surgeon immediately to start working like fuck on them. Um, I'm sorry, I'll try to keep this short. So, You know, we're working on them for most of the night, and we're giving them, like, 50-50 chance, maybe even less for the old woman. Um, um, And it's just kind of, it looks like they may or may not pull through. And so, um, uh, yeah. You know what? Let's let's drink this shitty shitty wine and then let's we'll go out to eat. Yeah? Why don't we do that? Yeah, me me and Terry know a place. We'll drink this fucking wine first though. Yeah? We haven't actually eaten there yet, but it looks good from the outside, you know? Yeah. I like food. You know, if I had to do it all over again, I I'd be a chef. You know? Right, Terry? So you were saying? I was? Yeah, about the older couple. What happens next? Older but wiser. I'm, I'm just joking, hun. Can Go on, continue with your story. Terry, sometimes you... Sweetie, I'm just making a joke. Where's the joke? Mel, I'm sure she didn't mean to offend you. Laura, if I didn't have Terry, if I didn't love her so much, and if Nick wasn't my best friend, I'd fall in love with you right now. I'd carry you straight off into the sunset, beautiful. Tell your story, hun. Okay, uh, where was I? Okay, yeah, so, right. So I dropped in every now and then to check on them, uh, the couple. Um, and, you know, they they had the, you know, like you see, you've seen them in the movies where, like, their bodies and the whole body cast and the legs are slung up and they've got little, uh, you know, eye holes and mouth holes and stuff like that. And so, you know, um, I checked on them every now and then. And the guy, the man, the old guy, he, he was... He was constantly depressed. Like, he told me. Like, he was very depressed. Even after he found out that he and his wife were going to pull through. You know? And it wasn't the crash. I mean, the crash was one thing, of course. But it wasn't the crash. You know, I, I get up to his, his little mouth hole and I'd be like, so it was the crash. And he'd be like, no, it wasn't the crash. You know what it was? He, he, he told me he was depressed because he couldn't see his wife. Through his eye holes. Can you imagine that? I mean, the man couldn't turn his goddamn head to see his goddamn wife. I mean, it was it was killing the old fart because he couldn't look at the fucking woman. I think I'm gonna call my kids. Is that alright with everyone? I'm I'm gonna call my kids. Where's my phone? What if Marjorie answers the phone? You know you don't wanna to talk to Marjorie. I don't wanna to talk to Marjorie, but I wanna to talk to my kids. There is not a day that goes by where he wishes Marjorie would either get remarried or die. For one thing, she is bankrupting us. Nell says she won't get married again just to spite him, but she has a boyfriend who is living with her and the kids. 
So we are supporting the boyfriend too. Mm-hmm. You know, she's allergic to bees. So if I'm not praying she gets remarried again, I'm praying she gets stung to death by a swarm of fucking bees. Jesus, smell. That's too far. You know, maybe I won't call the kids. Maybe it isn't such a hot idea. Maybe we'll just go out to eat, huh? How does that sound? Sounds fine to me. Eat, not to eat. Drink or not to drink. I could go right off to the sunset. What does that mean, honey? It means just I could keep going. I mean, I could eat something. I've never been more hungry in my life. Is there something to nibble on, or? I'll, I'll put some cheese and crackers out in a minute. These apples are fake. Sorry, I'm sorry. I fucked it up. No, I fucked it up too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking wrote this too. You did. Damn it. I was? <laughs> <laughs> Cut. <laughs> I didn't have Terry, and if I didn't love her so much, and if Nick wasn't my best friend, I'd fall in love with you right now. I'd carry you off in the sunset. <laughs> <laughs> when we act like we know what we're talking about, when we're talking, fuck me. <laughs> what? <laughs> and then I laughed at myself. Which is the so I just won't. I won't fucking do that. Yeah, just, just like, like think of like dead babies. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that Thank you. It's uh, one of my favorite poems by him. Who can judge anyone else's situation? Shut the fuck up, <laughs> Oh yeah, Schroeder. <laughs> Leslie, Josh Leslie, I love you. I just wanna say that. We love you. We love you. We love you. You guys are amazing. Okay. Anyway. Back to the regular scheduled program. On beautiful boy over here. Alright. Just so good. <laughs> <laughs>